Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are well. Today we're going to be doing a video which I have been excited to do for such a long time. <laughs> that is, I'm going to be giving you book recommendations based on my favourite Pokemon. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> yes! So as a kid, I was never into the games. I never watched anything, never played anything, but um, when I started going out with Tom, he's a massive Pokemon fan, and we started playing the games together. Today, I'm gonna be taking you through my favorite Pokemon. I'm so excited. I get to, I'm gonna tell you what I named them. <laughs> God, you don't know how excited I am for this. I'm so hyped. As you can see, I thought I'd film in front of this. We have like a little Pokemon shrine. Let's zoom in. So we've got Eevee, we've got Totodile, we've got Dragonite, then we've got a Pokeball, then we've got Celebi, then we've got Poplio. And <laughs> we have two other Pokemon that are usually up there, but they're two of my favorites. So I've got them down here and I'm gonna hold them up when I talk about them. Okay, should we go? <laughs> okay, so my favorite Pokemon, my favorite Pokemon ever, 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 ever. <laughs> My favorite Pokemon ever is Drifloon. Now, I actually. <laughs> My proudest moment. <laughs> for Christmas one time or something, I made Drifloon for my boyfriend. <laughs> this is our Drifloon. I made it, well, I made it with the help of my grandma because I'm not a like super good at making stuff person. Do you know what I mean? But I'm pretty proud. Like I think Drif Drifloon looks cute and look at the little hearts, right? My Drifloon is just called Floon because I think if her name is good, then don't change it. The same way I just called my Wooloo Wooloo, I think Floon it's the perfect name. So this is my Drifloon. So on its Pokédex, Drifloon is described as famous for dragging people away to die. <laughs> Look at this face. How can it, isn't it the cutest thing? How can it be dragging people away to die? And an old folktale calls it a signpost for wandering spirits. So when I was thinking about this, I thought, what's like a wandering spirit book or whatever? And I thought, I have the perfect series. So I've spoken about this a few times on my channel, but my recommendation based on Drifloon is the Wayward Children series by Sean and Maguire. So this is a short series of novellas about children who go through doors to worlds that are like perfect for them. They feel completely at home in these worlds, but then a lot of them have returned to our world and are having to kind of come to terms with living here and learn how to live in this society again because the when they live in their world there's often really strange rules that are very different to our society so one girl she learns to stand very still she has to stand very still in this world that she goes to so she has she moves very slowly when she's back in our world or some have nonsense worlds where like the rules of logic completely go out the window and so i just feel like this being a signpost for wandering spirits those kids are all kind of wandering spirits and they're all just having to learn how to live here again. And some of the books follow them in their respective worlds, which I also think is so floon. Like their worlds are just so like, I can just imagine little floons are floating about. <laughs> are you on drugs? Are you fucking on drugs? I don't think I, I don't think I can explain to you my love for floon. I, what was the baby? Mm -hmm. What was the, what was the game floon was in? Generation four, oh. Simo, Pokemon Diamond, Pearl and Platinum. Okay. You meet it outside the valley windmills. Yeah, the wind works. This, uh, the windmills. So you can only catch it on Fridays. And so you can only catch it on Fridays? You can only catch it on Fridays. And there's this little girl who you rescue in this mission. And, and, and she talks about how there's this balloon Pokemon going around and making like the sound of it. And I was like, oh. I remember it, and I was like, oh, it's, it's a Monday. So we're going to have to have to wait a while until Friday. And for some reason, it didn't work on making this game. So I had to keep engineering the situation. So I was like... Oh, we've got to come back here. Oh, there's something to do here on the Friday to make it sound like this. And then Megan would randomly encounter this thing. Be like, whoa, what is this? <laughs> it was the first game I actually finished. I like played all the way through. And I remember the final battle was like, it was so long, wasn't it? Yeah, the, we were there for about 40 minutes. We were there for so long for the final battle. And Floon just pulled through and like, Oh, it was just such a good team. Everyone in that team I just love. When I play Pokemon, like I don't catch Pokemon if they're not going to be in my team. Like I feel guilty about it. So like my team is a very select few <laughs> that I've built over the course of the game. And like I kind of know going into the game or Tom usually has a list of the Pokemon he thinks I'm going to want in my team. And then we build it up as the game goes along. My next favorite Pokemon is Ralts. I just think it's so cute. And then as you, as you like evolve it into its evolutions, like 
they're just it's just such a good pokemon like it's just such a good pokemon my roots is called katia after the drag queen so Ralt is a psychic Pokemon and it senses the emotions of others. And I was thinking, okay, what have I read where maybe someone's psychic or something? And I thought of something and they're not psychic, but essentially I need to explain to you what the book is. The book is The Girl of Fire and Thorns. This whole series I'm doing a read along for with Nicole, Simone and Ishi. And I really enjoyed this series. And our lead character, um, Elisa, she is a godstone in her belly button. And that means she's like the chosen one and all these religions want her as like a martyr. Oh, really? <sighs> that sucks. That's, uh, I mean. <laughs> but part of what the godstone is, is that if there's danger ahead or like someone's gonna die or something, the godstone turns to ice so she can tell when when maybe her and her friends are approaching a dangerous situation, she can warn them. And if she's trying to figure out what the correct decision to make is, the godstone will often go warm and like telling her that's the right decision. Um, and so I thought this was really similar to like kind of roots being able to sense the emotions of others. And I was so surprised that I enjoyed this series. Like when Nicole asked me to, I think I said this before, but when Nicole asked me to do this read along with her, I was like, yeah, okay, but I'd never heard of the series. And I am so happy that I've done it because it's actually a great series and I never would have read it otherwise. And I think that the kind of magic system around our protagonist is so interesting. The relationships with everyone in the, in the story is really interesting. The world is so vivid and really well built up. And so yeah, I would really just recommend that series. I think it's a really great one. My next favorite Pokemon is my first ever Pokemon. The first ever Pokemon I ever caught and was my Pokemon. I didn't catch it, but you know what I mean. My first ever Pokemon was Torchic. <laughs> Look at him! Don't you love his feet? I love when you see. I'll try and put an animation in when he runs. Oh my god! So Torchic is called Theo, and I was trying to figure out last night why I called him Theo, and Tom just thinks he just told me to call him Theo. Yeah, I did. At the beginning, Tom often named my Pokemon, and uh, now I'm bolder and I come up with great names, amazing names. <laughs> but I did tell a bit of a lie there. Torchic says in the Pokedex, inside its body is a place where it keeps a small flame. Hug it, it will be as warm as a hot water bottle. <laughs> Torchic is a fire fighting type, right? Fire fighting type. Fire yeah. yeah, fire fighting type. And I was trying to think of something that feels like kind of aggressive <laughs> and like fiery and full of action. And I thought of, are we surprised the Illuminae series? This is the second in the series. Oh my God, this series is so action packed. So there's, I don't think there's actually much, is there fire? Oh, maybe there's fire. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything, but maybe there's fire at some point in the series. And it's so, fast pace. Every page, there's a new reveal. More information is revealed and the characters have to adjust their course and what they're doing. The first book, I don't want to describe this one because there'll be spoilers. Well, there's actually not really spoilers because we follow different characters in each book. But the first book in the series, we follow a couple who have just broken up, like a teenage couple. They've just broken up and their planet is invaded and they have to escape on these kind of warships and they are on separate ships and they're communicating to each other through like the backlogs of the internet. The story in, I'm sure you've heard me go on about it loads, but these stories are told through multimedia format. So you have pages like this. Oh, hang on, that's a good example. In this Gemini one, um, one of our characters draws a lot. So we have a lot of her illustrations. Um, it's told through surveillance camera footage. It's told through the AI being aware of certain things and talking. And it's just so good. I've given both in this series five stars. This, along with um, the Heartstopper series, are like the only things I've really given five stars this year so far. And it is just incredible. You read it and you are just like shell-shocked. You just really, it's just an experience. And you're, you are so tense throughout all of reading this that you are just sitting there like, <gasps> and after you've finished it, like it takes a little while to like calm down. But I love the way in which this is told. The multimedia format is like, in incredible. So my next Pokemon is Meryl. I love Meryl. Meryl is like out here. So my Meryl is called Bob <laughs> after Bob the drag queen. <laughs> and um, uh, one of the best, one of the best features of Meryl is that it has thick fat. 
<laughs> it's so pudgy. <laughs> but like, because it's fat, it's like so um, strong. Um, no, it doesn't look strong. It doesn't look strong. You look at it and you think, oh, he's so cute and pudgy. But like, he is strong. He is like, there's so much muscle underneath that. <laughs> The book I'm gonna recommend based on Meryl is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This is because like, it's kind of hard to get through just like, you know, it's got that thick fat, just like pop. I didn't expect it to have such an emotional hit, just like I didn't expect Rollout to hit you like that. I didn't. <laughs> so in Ninth House, we follow Alex Stern, um, who has lived a kind of troubled life up till now, but she, and she's the sole survivor of like a, triple homicide or something like that and she gets a chance to turn her life around and come to Yale and kind of supervise all the secret societies there that are doing some dark magic some really dark magic this book is very dark there's a lot of trigger warnings for it which I um, I'll try and leave a link below I think Mel to the any did a blog post where she went through all the trigger warnings because I think you should be very aware of all of them before going into the book there's definitely one of the earlier scenes is where one of the secret societies is doing blood magic and i was very uncomfortable reading that so if you know that's a trigger for you then be careful but this book is just so good not everyone loved it but i loved it it does take a bit of time to get through it's not going to be a quick read and that's not necessarily because it's length some books are just a bit more dense with kind of the information they've got i felt very connected to alex stern as a character i felt very connected to a lot of the characters and i think it's a really great look at kind of the rich and poor in society and how much your life can be dictated by the circumstances you're born into um, and that's not something i see people talk about a lot with this book i think it's a really you know Alex Stern has lived a really troubled life and she's very much a product of the life she's lived and I think that it's just a really really great look at that and kind of the people that she's known in her past life before coming to Yale um how they were affected by their circumstances as well so I really enjoyed that aspect of it and if you haven't picked up Ninth House yet like trust me it's good I did a vlog on it which I'll link as well um if you want to know a bit more about it that's non-spoilery I don't think you'll be scared off by what some people have said because I was almost scared off but I loved it I loved it so much it was one of my favorite books that I read last year you, you haven't been naming the types you didn't name what type Bob was and you didn't properly name what type Katya is I said Katya was psychic yeah but it's psychic fairy type because the overall yeah but that didn't that didn't of mm -hmm. all your picks mate is that you like fairy type Bob. I do like fairy Bob's type a Pokemon Bob is water fairy type Bob is water fairy psychic fairy yeah the upcoming Pokemon is also fairy type I do love fairy types I'm just drawn to fairy types because they're cuteness Altara is dragon Dragon Fairy. Okay, my next favourite Pokemon is, I just said it, but Altaria. <laughs> and Altaria is called Sasha after the drag queen Sasha Valor. <laughs> One of the Pokedex entries for Altaria is that they sing melodies. I think they're like calm people or something by singing melodies. And a book that I associate a lot with music, but not only music, like that kind of melodic, like floaty, eerie music would be the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. Really, I just wanted to mention the series again because I don't feel like I've spoken enough about it and not enough of you are telling me you've read it. So it's one of my favorite series of all time. We follow, oh my God, why have I forgotten her name? I should have kept my moof claws. We follow Vasya as she kind of learns more about magic and oh, I don't want to I don't want to spoil anything but she lives in kind of the Russian wilderness it's set in old Russia she discovers that she has powers and it's her story of her saving first her town then her city and then her world and it's all about the magical beings and creatures that are in old Russian folklore and it's just the most magical book and special book I've ever read it reads like a fairy tale and I I, I, I don't fully know how to explain it to you like it's fully like you are being told an old Russian fairy tale it's some of the best writing I have ever read and you just are completely taken along by the story and just like you know some books you feel like you can you know it's a book you know it's a story and so part of you is reading it going oh, I wish the ending had gone that way or I wish that had happened that way. With this series, it doesn't feel like something that could ever be changed by you. It feels real. It feels so real. Sasha just gives off Winter Night Trilogy vibes. Like, 
just when I see Sasha like floating on these like clouds, I think of like the snow, but also like, I just think of that kind of like old Russian music. I don't, that sounds really weird, but I just love this series and I want you to go read it. And um, yeah, Sasha definitely reminds me of it. So my last favorite Pokemon is a very new Pokemon from the newest Pokemon game. Um, and that is Sobble. Ah! <laughs> I love Sobble. My Sobble is called Mr. Meeks after my cat Miko. Um, just because I think when Miko was a kitten, I'll put a picture in. He looks really like Sobble. Sobble is just the cutest Pokemon ever. So Sobble cries a lot. <laughs> and I just love him. Like I just want to protect him. And he just, he walks. When you go in this game, you can set up tents. And when you set up the tent and he's like the he's so boy he hasn't evolved yet and he's walking around he walks around so slowly and softly <laughs> I just love him so much. His Pokedex description is when scared this Pokemon cries. Its tears pack the chemical punch of a hundred onions and attackers won't be able to resist weeping. <laughs> I just love him so much. <laughs> just the best Pokemon ever. And when he evolves, he has this move. Is it Snipeshot? Snipeshot. He has this move called Snipeshot and he goes <laughs> with his finger. The water spurts out of his finger and he goes <laughs> and he's just like I just love him he's just my son that I need to protect anyway so for this I knew I had to come up with a book that made me cry a lot if you watched my 24 hour readathon video which I'll link as well you know I cried a lot to A Monster Caused by Patrick Ness. I think a lot of people cried to this book. Essentially in this book, our main character, his mum has been diagnosed with cancer and he starts getting these nightmares, but not nightmares because they're real, where this monster turns up. So if I show you some of the pages, it's very dark, the illustrations, but that's kind of what they look like. Or oh, have we got any others? That's one of the monster there. The illustrations are amazing in this. And I sobbed so much at the end. For like the last, I don't know how many pages, loads of pages. <laughs> I was just sobbing and sobbing. It's a really special story for kids as well, learning to deal with, you know, those in our lives being ill and with the prospect of death and like teaching kids about that. It's such a great great book and I really want to read some more of Patrick Ness. When I was like younger, like very very young, like 12, I did pick up the knife of Never Letting Go and didn't like it but I was 12 so maybe some things went over my head but I would just recommend this book if you want to cry like a sobble because oh god it's so, uh, it's so sad. It's such a sad book. I mean I we've learned that I cry a lot of books quite easily. I mean I cried at Gemina and that's not even really that sad but I just cried at it. So this book is something that has made a lot of people cry and even just thinking about it I get a bit sad so yeah definitely definitely pick this up if you want a cry like so <laughs> so there we have it that is all of my recommendations based on my favorite pokemon let me know down below who your favorite pokemon is and um, if we share any of the same favorite pokemon and let me know if you've enjoyed this video i'd love to do it again i've got many other favorite pokemon that i'd love to introduce you to and recommend books based off of so yeah let me know if you liked this video and i'd love to do it again i like doing really niche book recommendations based on your know, shows or games i like so let me know if you enjoy that I love him so much. And um, yeah, I'll see you very, very soon with another video and I hope you are well until then. Bye.